My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. Today we will talk about dynamic tiles. So you know regular tiles pretty well, I hope, at this point. Tiles are the little piece, um, pieces of background that you have on your map. They can be traversable or not, they can have uh, some properties. This is a tile. Uh, most of the entities here are tiles except um, the destination and, and this tile transporter. Um, tiles are optimized by the engine um, to treat them uh, in bulk, let's say, at um, yeah, when, when the engine want to, wants to display them on the screen, it, it does not treat them individually anymore. So here you have, we are uh, in the quest editor, we have access to all individual tiles, obviously. But at runtime, during the execution of your game, for performance reasons, you don't have access to all these tiny tiles. They are treated them uh, together by the engine somehow, but what's important for you is that you don't have access to this to each tile uh, in your scripts. One way to realize that is to check what you have here when you edit a tile. You actually cannot uh, set a name to your tile, unlike all other types of entities. Uh, so you could you can put a name to this tile transporter. You cannot put a name to a tile, which means you you just cannot do anything with it uh, dynamic. And this allows the engine to to run pretty fast. And if some of your tiles do need some dynamic behavior, uh, then you can use dynamic tiles as we will see in this episode. Um, let's say we want to make a, a switch that will create a ladder uh, somewhere on our cliff. Here is a switch, we will call this ladder switch. And if we create a ladder here, um, that's great, except that um, with regular tiles, you, you cannot really uh, do it dynamically. The ladder just exists. And if you want to make it appear later, so by activating the switch, uh, you, you, you will need dynamic tiles. So it's quite easy to do. You can select your tiles and convert them to dynamic tiles. And then we don't see any difference really yet, but it, now you can edit it and you can give it a name. You can also decide it's, if it's whether it is it should be enabled or not at at start. So let's call this one ladder switch one, and I will give them all a name. So they will be called automatically ladder switch two, ladder switch three, and so on. Oops. So I created my dynamic tiles by converting from static to dynamic. You can also do the opposite, convert it back to static, but then it will lose its name. Um, and by the way, I also need one more here. Uh, I need one more piece of grass in this tile set. Actually, more like that. And same, I want it to be dynamic. Okay, so now I have like 10 tiles that are dynamic. Um, It's good to know that you can also create dynamic tiles using this particular icon here, um, instead of converting them from static ones. So you, you just have to choose their pattern later. But usually I use convert from static tiles. Um, yeah. One important feature about dynamic entities versus static regular tiles is that 
any dynamic entity is always displayed above all uh, regular tiles. So, for example, this piece of cliff here is a regular tile. I can change its order um, with respect to this one. For example, bring to back. Well, that's not what I want, but <laughs> just to show that it is possible to uh, change their order here. But they will always stay behind, well, anything that is dynamic. So, teletransporters, switches, destinations, and dynamic tiles. So, in particular, there is no way that I can put this piece of cliff, even if I click bring to front, I cannot put it above the dynamic entities. And similarly, if I select a dynamic tile and say bring to back, it will stay above standard tiles. So I can reorder uh, regular tiles among themselves and I can reorder dynamic entities, but all regular tiles are always displayed before all uh, dynamic entities. And by dynamic entity, I mean anything other than static tiles. So I mean dynamic tiles, I mean switches, uh, enemies, the hero, and so on. Um, so it's it's important to, to remember that. It's for performance reasons. Again, all static regular tiles will be treated separately in a first pass and drawn uh, um, yeah, to, together at once, more or less. It's a bit more complicated because they can also be animated, but that's the, the basic idea. And if you really want some static tiles to be displayed above uh, something dynamic, then you can use the layers feature. So. For example, this, these leaves here, they are displayed uh, one layer above the rest. So when I say that dynamic entities are displayed after um, static tiles, I mean on the same layer because everything that is on, la on layer one will uh, uh, still be displayed above um, anything that is on layer zero, even dynamic entities that are on layer zero. But you already knew that. Um, okay. So, yeah, that was an important detail to, to mention before we, we start playing with these scripts. So at this point, I created a dynamic, so some dynamic ties for our ladder here. They are enabled at start. I can disable them at start by unchecking this for all my dynamic tiles here, but it's a bit painful. Let's do it from a script. It's much easier like that. I'm started. When the map starts, I want my tiles to be disabled. Um, so there is a, this function set entities enabled, whose parameters are first the prefix of all entities that you want to disable. So all entities whose names start with ladder tile, I want them disabled when the map starts. I can, I can already test this. It didn't work. <laughs> um, by the way, I have no idea why. Ladder tile false. So all of these. Oh, I call them ladder switch. It doesn't make any sense. Um, sorry, just for clarity, I want to rename them all. Ladder tile. Yeah, sorry about that. Let's try again. Perfect. And now when the switch is activated, function, uh, it's called ladder switch. On activated. Well, 
I will just do the opposite. I will enable these again and maybe play a sound. Hey, nice. So this is how you can use dynamic ties to just enable them or disable them at, at runtime. Um, you can do more than that. You, you can even move them. Um, you can imagine some uh, move, moving platform, uh, things like that. Um, yeah, the whole entity API is available on, on dy dynamic ties, so you can really do a lot of things. Um, I want to do a second example. Um, let's say we have this dungeon map, maybe for a boss, and the whole room is surrounded by holes. Um, okay, I forgot to put the whole tile here. So it's this one. The black part was just the, the background of the map with, with nothing at all. So here I just put some holes and let's, let's already test that just to make sure that my holes are working. Yay! And to make it more interesting, we will the room will look like that when, when we start. We'll like will look like a regular room. And when the hero enters the room, the floor will collapse gradually to give uh, to get to this point. So we can do that quite easily with dynamic tiles. So we'll take dynamic tiles we'll create one dynamic tile here, uh, convert to dynamic. We can call it collapsible floor one. Um, and we'll create more of them here. So they are automatically named collapsible floor two, collapsible floor, floor three. And I create them uh, yeah, with this numbered suffix and the, the order is important because I will I will dis I will disable these ties one by one uh, using their their names to define the order. So the first is one is here, the second is here and so on until number forty apparently. Okay, so how do we do that? We use a sensor to detect when the hero really enters the room. Um, collapse sensor, maybe. And it, in an actual game, we will we would probably close the door, play some music, and also create the the boss. But here we we are just focusing on the on the tile uh, part. Okay, so what happens when you, uh, wait, first I need to test, I didn't do much, but I created some floors, they are dynamic floors, but for now the hero, the player does not realize that there is anything special in this room. Okay, so when the sensor is activated, We'll, we will disable all these uh, floor ties one by one. So with a timer. Maybe 200 milliseconds. <laughs> um, so how do we do that? We want to get the current tile, which is map get entity. Um, How, do, how did I call them? Collapsible floor one. I mean, and some index. Yes. So I need a variable index that starts at one. And if tile 
is nil, it means actually that my um, th that yeah my index is already past the last one number forty. It doesn't exist. So in this case, we just return false to stop the timer. Otherwise, what do we do? We disable the tile and we play a sound. So I pr I, ha I found a cool sound for that, maybe falling rock. And we increase our index. And we return true to repeat the timer. And that's it, except some bugs. As soon as you play with dynamic tiles and corruptible floors and things like that, and, and bad grounds, it becomes a bit tricky. Okay, cool. It worked. Uh, and I can fall in, in my holes. Uh, <laughs> But s something weird happened when I left the room. Did you hear the sound again? It's actually that my sensor can be activated multiple times. So it's really terrible, terrible. Please don't do that. One way to avoid it is just to remove or disable the sensor itself the first time it is activated. Because it's used only once. Okay, now nothing more happens when I try to activate it multiple times because it no longer exists. But our second problem is that... Remember that when you fall in a, a hole, later the engine will uh, put you back at the latest solid coordinates? What happens if the hole is created below you? You just fall indefinitely because the engine did register these coordinates as solid and, they and it will put you back there. So if your hero still has control during this cutscene of the floor collapsing, then you need some kind of protection. Maybe you want to uh, save the solid ground in the entrance of the room like we did in the previous tutorial. Um, so you do hero save solid ground and then the engine will put the hero back to these coordinates here of the sensor itself um, yeah of the hero more exactly of, of the current coordinate of the hero when you call this which happens to be when the sensor is activated so yeah, the hero is on the sensor. So, uh, what I'm trying to say is that if the hero ever falls in the background of this map, he will be put back at the entrance on the sensor. So you're safe. Uh, that's one way to do it. Another way is to freeze the hero during the whole cutscene. If you consider this to be a cutscene, but don't forget to unfreeze your hero when the cutscene ends. So here I'm frozen, I cannot move anymore. Uh, okay, I think you get the idea at this point. So in, in this tutorial, I use dynamic ties to do pretty cool things, but I actually only use one feature of them, which is to enable or disable them dynamically. But again, you can do a lot of things with them, including moving them. And that can allow you to do some some pretty advanced stuff. Um, yeah, dynamic ties are quite, quite often useful as soon as you need anything dynamic with your with your tiles, you can use them and the rest of your tiles stay uh, as regular static tiles and you can do really cool things again and please show them all of these cool things 
to uh, people on Solaris Discord and we will help. Uh, okay, I think that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.